G'day, I'm Tim Thompson and I'm really excited. I've just arrived at my mate Alan's place and Alan was telling me the other day that he's got plans to get his stock out of his dams, fence his dams off and run water to them. Well, Alan, dogs aside, this is pretty typical of a dam that stock have access to. Yes. Lots of evidence of erosion around the banks. The water's pretty filthy. Yeah, they're just walking around here, walking out there. They they always want to walk out in the middle where the water is a bit cleaner, perhaps, but yep. uh, it just gradually gets leveled out and just thick mud, useless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And obviously, if there's too much clay and stuff in the water as well, it's not as good a quality drinking water no. for them. They're not going no. to do as well. No. Um, so the idea is to fence off dams like yes. this that you've got on the place. The uh, underground main that comes from the, where the solar will be is just over there, so I can just install a that. install a trough for there for this paddock, one in that paddock, and that's two paddocks solved. Well, I'm excited. I've got a solution here from Commodore Australia, one of the leaders in alternative power solutions for farms in Australia. So let's take the gear in to see Alan, get underway and get this gear working to supply free water for Alan's farm. <laughs> So Alan, here it is. Um, we've got a one kilowatt bore pump. We've got six solar panels to run it. The framing, the solenoids, the valves, and even a whole stack of little clips and stuff for you to sort out and figure yeah. out. I'm keen to get it unloaded and have a look at your project and yeah. see what we do. Good, let's Should get into it. Alan was a bit frustrated this time. He had to follow me down the track and I think I fair slowed him down. I always love coming to do projects at Alan's have a look at this. How spectacular is this property and how well managed is it? The kit is surprisingly simple. There's not too many parts and I think you could probably put it together without instructions. At least that's my theory anyway. So hook into it Alan, what do you reckon? Give it a Yeah, so it's literally how many metres of cable do you reckon uh, there? They said there was 20 metres of cable in this for this install. Alright. Now be really careful not to cut anything underneath this tape. I uh, cut something open the other day and I heard a loud fizzing and I'd cut through a can of refreshing ale. That was not good. It's like Christmas time. It is, isn't it? Yeah, just as well I didn't cut too deep. There's some cable right on the top. Alright, so let's have a look. What do we got here? Looks like a control box. Very good. Quite simple, straightforward. Simple Anderson plugs there. Yeah. And then we've got, I don't know, some stuff. You want to sort that out? <laughs> And then two parts of the one pump. That's the motor component. And that'd be the pumper. This is the multi-stage centrifugal section. So, Alan, you've set up a few of these pumps in the past? Yes, so we've had just some experience with this type of bore pump. Is there anything in this kit that you see as unusual or concerns you in any way? Or you no, reckon it's pretty straightforward? I think I can recognise everything here and how it's likely to go together. Because this is a Tim Thompson approved kit, there's no instructions. <laughs> yes, I can see that. Wow. <laughs> oh, it's always more fun when you guess. So, Alan, this is your main, one of your main dams. You've yes, got several yes. on the property. Yep. Um, and at the moment, your stock are watering directly out of dams, and that's creating you some problems. Yes, so I've got 12 paddocks on the property, and there's probably uh, eight or nine dams. So they've yep. got access to that. There's a few stock troughs, but I would like to turn it all into stock troughs. Yep. Keep the cows out of the dams. So you're actually planning on going up the hill as well and putting in some other tanks. Put so an extra can feed the rest reservoir of the tank up there. Yep. And so we'll have about 40 odd thousand litres as a, just a standing reservoir. Yep. For and then from there and from other places on this underground main is to go through and. Uh, set up some stock troughs off that. Assemble a solar unit here so I can uh, just 
plumbing to the existing underground mains and it should all work beautiful. reasonably well. <laughs> yeah, hopefully so. So you're going to set up your solar panels along this fence. Now, what are the considerations that you've got when you're setting up the solar panel? First of all, north is that way. Yep. East that way, west that way. The ideal is for the sun to come over. We'll get maximum sunlight uh, during the summertime when we want it. Yep. The, the sun will be there, so the solar panel will be right angle to that. We're facing now, this will confuse the American viewers. Oh, right. So we're, we're facing north because we're in the southern hemisphere, and we're facing south. Yes. But same deal. Yes. Now, your, your ideal angle, you calculated that based on what? Uh, well, basically, we're 37 degrees south of the equator. Yep. Uh, the sun comes below the equator to the Tropic of Capricorn, 15 degrees during the summer. Yep. So 37 minus the 15 gives us about 32 angle, 32 degrees. So that's about the angle we'll have the sun facing to the north. Yep. And that'll put the solar panel at right angles to the sun. So in the middle of summer, you're perfectly spot on right angles okay. to the sun. Well, I must confess it's not the next day. It's actually a couple of days later and I'm back out at Allen's and I'm keen to see how the install of this solar powered pump is going. Alan, how are you, mate? Good morning, Tim. Good, thank you. Um, you've been busy, I hear. I've uh, wanted to get this in. Yeah, I, 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 I've had to come out. It's, it's, it's yes. pretty urgent that we come out. You really want water for your stock. Um, so, Alan, you've been doing a bit of assembly already. Yes. Can you show us what you've been up to, yep. mate? Come over and have a look what I've got here. All right. Well, it looks like you have been busy, mate. You've got a few yeah. things sorted out here. It looks impressive. You've got your pump assembled. That uh, just came in two parts, just for stainless steel nuts. Put that back together. Put that together, and I've started with some of the plumbing fittings here. Just put an angle on the top. Yes. The right angle there. Yep. Now this this is your manifold inlet. Is that correct? The delivery manifold. This one. Yep. So the pump supplies into this point here. Yep. Comes up through here. We have pressure gauge, pressure switch. There is a non-return valve in there. Okay, so water can't drain back down can't through the drain pump back if through it stops. The pump. Yeah. Uh, just a delivery shut off, and this will, this here will go into the uh, existing line in the shed. So you, it's important to note you're not starting from scratch. No. Um, you wouldn't have to do some of this stuff if, if you, basically you were starting from scratch. But you're actually going into the outlet manifold from an existing diesel pump. Yes. So you've set this up so that with two taps, you can bypass the solar pump and run the diesel pump if you're doing irrigation of your paddocks and yeah. you need really high volumes. Yes. Or just turn the taps back the other way and it will just revert back to solar supply for the stock troughs and the domestic use. Now over here, you've got your shutoff switch and you've got your circuit board. That's the main... Uh, PV solar panel isolator switch. Yep. The uh, controller here. Instructions are very simple on the inside. I just followed the colour. So it's literally red to red, black to black. Red to red, black to black. And you've just, you've just, all you've done is connect your isolator switch to the panel here. To the controller. Yep. Yes. And then your pump is going to connect yep. according to these three colours here to those three terminals those on three the board. Those three terminals there. The pressure switch goes into the next one, next two terminals along there. So that's uh, pretty straightforward. And like all good projects, Alan, there's been one little bit of change. Yes. Um, you've got your posts in ready for the solar panels, but you've decided to do this job in two stages. Yes. And you looked at the roof of the shed and it was actually on exactly the right angle. That close, it doesn't matter. So for today, we're just putting three panels up three onto there. the roof and then you're going to put three panels onto these posts later on. And it's interesting to note, you've got six panels. Yes. But three panels in series will run your pump. Three, three panels, three 24 volt panels gives you your 72. Yep. So that'll be fine to run for so a little bit. pump needs 72 volts. Yes. And then just having extra three panels gives you more power, but you, you, you wire those in in parallel, so you're still staying at 72. Still staying at 72 but the amount of power to run this, this pump is about a thousand watts. Yep. So it'll be able to run with the six panels, it'll be able to run at full power even in not so perfect conditions. But today being a sunny day and, and being somewhat near the end of summer, yes, um, we should still get enough power to make it run. We'll still be able to get water out, don't worry about that.
Now, Alan, you don't like replacing things. You've got no. a bit of a hack here to try and make this cable last a little bit longer because it's going to be out on the surface of the dam, potentially. Yes, yeah, it's just out exposed. So I um, have a bit of 20mm uh, poly, black poly pipe. That yep. seems to last forever outside. So we're just going and to... And run some antenna cable through that to give you a bit of a... A drawstring. Pull. Yep. So we'll just pull this through the uh, poly pipe and we'll just just to further protect the cable a bit longer. You get a few extra years of UV protection out of that, won't you? Yeah. yeah. Did you like say switch this on? Yeah. Oh, there we go. Don't you love that? Free water. So Alan, there we are. You've got uh, solar panels on the roof of your pump shed, driving a solar pump in your dam and filling up your stock troughs. Like you say, almost for free. You had to buy the thing to begin with. Yes. There'll be a few years of payoff, I would imagine. Yes. But after a while, you're going to actually end up with net free water. Yes, there's going to be a bit of work fencing out the dams for a start. Yep. So that's an ongoing. I wonder who can do some fencing work for me. I'll see you later. <laughs> well, here's a big test on the pump setup for Alan. I'm over a kilometre and a half away from the pump and I'm 30 metres higher than the dam at this location. We've got the concrete header tank that's going to be feeding all of his supplies to his orchard and also to his animal troughs. Let's see if the water's reaching here. Well, here we are at the top of the tank and it looks like, yes, we have water. That's a free supply of water that will run whenever the sun's out. That's not bad. Don't forget guys, if you like videos like this, hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up. If you want details on the pump, um, check out timthompson.ag. I've got a blog on it, there's contacts and everything there. And I'll see you next week. When you'll be doing my fences. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>